so much. I uh, I love two series. I, I come out to them when I can, uh, and it's wonderful to have this community. And I so appreciate the work that the organizers put into this. I know it's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. Um, it means a lot to me, not just as a writer, but also as a fan to have to have the community here. Um, so, yeah, I, I got more of them already, and I just started. Second heart good folks. Thank you very much. Yeah, so what I'm going to read from uh, tonight is the novella that I wrote. Uh, Monstrous Little Voices is back there for sale. Um, it is uh, a collection of five novellas set in Shakespeare's fantasy world. And what my editor at the back of books, uh, David Moore, decided to do was to imagine that the wars that are happening in the background of these plays are all one war and to write new stories with these characters and in this setting. Uh, and the writers that I got to play around with and um, share Easter eggs and, and a few plot lines with uh, were Emma Newman, Adrian Tchaikovsky, Foz Meadows, and Jonathan Barnes. And uh, I just sort of felt like the uh, kid who had been mistakenly invited to play with these wonderful writers and uh, had a wonderful time. So my novella is called The Course of True Love. If you don't want to buy the entire print anthology for some reason, you can also buy just the ebook of my novella. Um, it's on Amazon and everywhere else. Um, so I'm going to do kind of a risky thing and, uh, and read a scene from the middle of The Course of True Love. Uh, there are three characters in this scene. One of them is Pomona, who is my protagonist. She is a, a witch of about 70 years old. <coughs> And uh, a long time ago, she was, when she was a teenager, she was a student of Hecate. And I know that my pagan and wicked friends are going to get on me, um, but uh, so, you know, Hecate is also uh, perfectly good, but um, apparently the consensus is that Shakespeare said Hecate, and that's what I hear in my head, so that's what I'm say tonight. Um, so she was a, a student of Hecate's, and uh, her best friend got pregnant and got exiled to a certain island, and that, that friend was Sycorax and her child was Caliban. And uh, so when Pomona uh, sort of kept this secret from Hecate, she was exiled in her own way to Illyria, which is basically Croatia, um, and, uh, and spent the next 50 years there. It's a very, very simple plant-based witch uh, who didn't have much power at all. And then one day she happened to find a missing person, and that missing person was an ambassador who had been basically causing, about to cause a war between Duke Orsino and King Oberon, uh, which, as you can imagine, would not be good. Um, so when we, uh, when we join into the story, Pomona has got this ambassador by the wrist, she's tied him up with some vines, and she's taking him to Orsino because she owes loyalty to Orsino. <coughs> and uh, she's just hoping that nothing else happens on the road. Pomona felt a dangerous lightness in her step. A foreboding of joy, as if she were on the verge of some marvel. The sun was very hot. She heard the dogs before she saw them, before she realized that three, she and her tongueness were approaching a fork where three roads joined. Fie on her wandering mind. All these years, Pomona had been weary at such crossroads, preparing herself for Hecate. And today of all days, the great witch chose to appear. Hecate's dogs appeared, one by one, out of the air. The vine strained against her arm as Vertumna stepped backward, but Pomona stood her ground, bootless to avoid Hecate when she had chosen, chosen to speak with you. Pomona had, 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 had cause to learn that many times long ago. The dogs, a witch's dozen, Pomona knew without counting, yipped and snarled until Hecate appeared herself in their midst and they quieted. The queen of witches had chosen one of the forms she used for strangers. Her body was one long, crooked stick, with another set across it for arms. Her head was completely covered in black cloth, tied to the neck long enough that the four corners fell almost to the ground. Sycorax used to call it the scarecrow. Her tumness was making a very good show of not being afraid, frowning at Hecate. What is this folly? Hecate asked, gesturing at Cretonis. No one knew the shape of that concealed head, but when Hecate spoke, a melt seemed to move under the clinging cloth. The dogs grinned and slavered. A fairy, said Pomona. No point in lying if the truth lay within Hecate's sight. She had learned that too. 
A fairy, sang Kekit mocking. The fairy, you mean. The wayward son, angering Orsino. And here I find my own wayward Beldam dragging this very fairy off to Orsino. Unless I miss my guess or my bearings. There was a wind over Malfi, but I'm no weather cock. I serve Orsino, Pomona protested. I could not you serve me, I could guess. Albeit never very well. You have been secretive of late, Pomona. You have not told me all your doings. The vines that bound Pomona's strong box, where the grammar lay concealed, would be as nothing to come. And Pomona was often away from home. The cipher was not known to anyone but Pomona and Sycorax. Still, Hecate would doubtless guess the book's origin and purpose. If that was Hecate's game, let her ask straight out. Pomona was too old to bandy words with anyone, least of all the Queen of the South. My doings have been unworthy to tell, Pomona said. A little work here and there. I did not send you to Illyria to do a little work here and there. No, madam, you sent me here to punish me, to ensure that I would never be anything greater than a purveyor of simples. And so that's all I am and all I do. Hackett's cloth covered head moved from one side to the other. Saucy. If I could upset your plans, it was not my intent, I said. Oh, it's never your intent, Hackett sneered, the cloth puffing and sucking at her belt. Lo, these many years you have done as you wished, and damn the consequence. When you whispered the Sycorax and hid her secrets from me, were you thinking of me? No, I learned long ago that I cannot expect you to serve anyone but yourself. I had hoped, of course, that you would not interfere with my plans, as I do not interfere with yours. And yet here we are. Pomona stared. I believe the lady refers to me, Rotunda said dryly. Oh, it speaks, Hecate crowed. Yes, I do wonder that a fairy places himself in the hands of a word witch. It was Hecate who had made Pomona read Rooney, who had educated her in 13 known languages and two unknown. Pomona had never liked it much, never liked any poetry, really. Pretty words were as much used to her as cobwebs. I place myself in the hands of my rescuer, Rotunda said. Is it Hecate I address? It is she. I'm astonished that one as great as you should care about the whereabouts of one fairy, Thomas said. One fairy, who when nicely misplaced, had Oberon preparing for war. Oberon interferes with my plans less when he's distracted. But I can see all things, Pomona, and I arrange the world to my purposes, with your help or without it. I'm here now as a friend, to give you a friend's advice, if you will receive it. Pomona bowed her head to hide her flushed cheeks, as much as to show respect. Could Hecate truly see all things? For two score years, Pomona had hidden her grammar. Did Hecate know of that, of the existence of Caliban, of Pomona's plans? But no, if Hecate knew any of that, she would be more than peevish. If Hecate knew that Pomona sought the child born to Sycorax to teach him secret knowledge, the earth would have bubbled up and drowned Pomona by now. Tell me then where my duty lies, for always the path seems to fork beneath my feet, Pomona said. Do I follow love or fear or honor? All three, and all were down to me, said Hecate. But you never would be guided by my wisdom. In your youth, I could forgive you being headstrong, but I cannot forgive disloyalty. Disloyalty? Pomona had given her life to loyalty. She had tried to be loyal to the memory of Sycorax and to Hecate both, and Orsino too. There was no disloyalty in anything she did, but rather a serpent of loyalties that pulled her in all directions. And Hecate's supposed wisdom was no guidance, but merely one more set of demands that Pomona could never fulfill. I am here in Illyria on your command, Pomona said, looking up into Hecate's terrible face. I forswore all study of the higher arts because you wished it. I have no gift for prophecy. I cannot see the consequence of anything I do, and yet you damn me for my blindness. I act as I deem best, and I am unacceptable to you. I am the seed you sowed yourself. City clouds gathered yes. over the ocean. <coughs> but Hecate laughed. Poor little Pomona, he said. Would you hear my prophecy, then, to guide your feet? Pomona shook her head. To me it is no more use than to any mortal. I cannot read them. Here is my prophecy. Will ye or nill ye, Hecate screamed, and the four corners of the black cloth billowed. A cell awaits at Orsino's court. Wrath and war be your rewards. Shackled be he that you would free, and bound you both will ever be. A wind blew up from the sea, and even the dogs were quiet. A 
pretty verse, said Vertonis, but it cannot hold a candle to Rumi. His voice banished the clouds. Pomona smiled for Vertonis, but also for Hecate, who could not be other than she was after all her years. I give you my thanks, teacher, she said. But if I free him here and now, I will be breaking Orsino's law, and that I cannot do. Hecate sighed, and the sticks came apart and clattered to the ground. A scrap of dark cloth floated on the air for a moment. Then all that was left was the distant bang of dogs. How convenient such a mode of travel must be. Pomona stepped carefully around the sticks on her sore feet, feeling the vine go taut, knowing her kindness must follow. To follow he did, saying nothing. Perhaps he was used to apparitions. Do all of this answer to Hecate? he asked after a time. She took a moment before answering. She owed him nothing. Yet, he had answered Hecate too, and stood beside her bravely and without complaint. He could have asked to be free. He could have complained of Pomona's treatment of him. Made promises to Hecate to keep Oberon out of her way. He did none of that. All prudent witches show her respect, Pomona said, but not all are her students. I was once. When you were young, she laughed. When the world was young, or so it seems sometimes. I was her student from a baby. I could do witchcraft before I could walk. She is in the habit of taking in orphan children. I was the unwanted child of a Barbary pirate and her lover. Hecate raised me at her school in Algiers and taught me well. Until she found cause to punish me. Yes. She said nothing further but listened to the uneven sound of his footsteps. She had forgotten his hurt foot. She slowed her pace for only a little. They were not safe upon the road. Hecate had fallen. Titania might be next. And who could say what she would do? We were both raised away from the human lives we should have had, you and I, he said. She did not want to talk any more about the past, so she laughed. Like Romulus and Remus, she said, where shall we build our city? I'll stop there.